Miniature Realms is proudly sponsored by Income Gaming, Cheltenham's premier friendly local game store. Check the link in the description. Hello, welcome to Miniature Realms. My name's Stuart, and with Warhammer the Old World picking up the pace of its releases, we've recently had the pre-order for Orc and Goblin Tribes, and then at Adepticon, we had the big announcement of Dwarf Mountain Holds, and we don't have a release date for them yet, but things are looking very exciting. And that's what I want to talk about in this video. As a long-time Warhammer Fantasy Dwarf fan, I've painted and played those little guys on and off over the years, including last year playing them in 6th edition as I got ready for the return of square-based fantasy gaming. I really couldn't stop thinking about what this release might mean. I'm very excited about it, so I decided, you know what, I'll do a little video on it. I'll look again at the announcements, um, see if there's anything I missed, look at it in a little bit more detail, and maybe try to make some predictions or some guesses or some hopes and wish listing of what we may receive in the Arcane Journal and how that might develop the list that's in the Forces of Fantasy book beyond what's there now. Miniature Realms is proudly sponsored by Baron of Dice, premium wargaming dice. Over 500 styles, over 4,000 customer reviews. Welcome to the best dice on the planet. Let's start with the article on Warhammer Community. And I know this will grow as we get closer to the time of release. And no doubt there will be plenty of almanacs before the models are actually in our hands. But this does give us a really, really nice idea of what we've got coming. And the, the most important thing in many ways are these new battalion boxes. We've seen one for the Orc and Goblin tribes, and we can see one here for Dwarven Mountain Holds. Um, and in many ways, this is potentially a better set than the Orc and Goblin tribes box, which, while has a nice mix of troops, probably doesn't feature the ones that are most chosen in people's armies. Night goblins and fanatics and things definitely seems to be the way people are going, at least in terms of more competitive play. Um, but the Dwarf Mountain Holds box, at first glance, I would say is a really good base that you would need to build pretty much any Dwarf army. So there are 66 miniatures in the box, and hopefully it's the same price as the Orc and Goblin tribes. I can imagine it would be, which is £100. So we're going to make that assumption. Hopefully they stick to those same price points. And I, I think that's a pretty good price for getting into Warhammer in the modern age. I know lots of people will disagree with that and say Games Workshop things are too expensive. I'm not here to debate that, really. They are more expensive than some other companies, but I'm talking about within the context of starting a Games Workshop game, 66 miniatures for around £100, if we're going to make that assumption, is pretty good. Now, there are 32 Dwarf Warriors and 32 Dwarf Quarrelers, which can also be built as Thunderers. So that's your crossbow troops, your Quarrelers, or your Thunderers, which is your your, your guns, basically, your, your, your musket rifles. And there are also two of those 66 miniatures are actually gyrocopters and the newer designs that can be built as gyro bombers as well. And I'm pretty sure that those kits are really, really expensive, almost takes care of the cost of half of this box alone at the moment in their AOS style packaging. So this is pretty good value as, as far as I'm concerned. And those those dwarf warriors, you used to be able to build them, if I remember from this kit, in multiple different ways. I think you can make long beards, you can have um, great weapons, you can have shields and hand weapons, they may even be spare crossbows and things, you can maybe build them as rangers. They're pretty versatile, of course. Now this brings me on to the Arcane Journal, which I'm going to come back to a little bit later on in more detail, but this seems to be standard it was with all the others, so a 48-page Arcane Journal, and you'll have some scenarios in there, a couple of themed army lists in there, some extra profiles for things, and there's some miniatures later on in this article which will no doubt be covered in this book. So we'll talk about this a little bit later, because part of this video is me guessing what those two extra alternate army lists are going to be. Let's move on to the first of the really fun things for me, and this is the new miniatures, and this is the new Dwarf Lord with shield bearers. And I used to love the old version of this, and they've made this much bigger. There are now three dwarves carrying the shield, um, and I really, really love this model. It won't be for everyone. A lot of people prefer the, the older sculpts, and in many ways I, I do as well. I'm a big fan of, of old hammer stuff, and we will come back to that a little bit later on. 
Um, uh, but these are really, really nice. Um, I wasn't 100% sure how much I thought of the, the miniatures that came out in 8th edition for Dwarves. Um, and, and while these are modern designs as well, I do really, really like these. How they'll scale, I don't know. I don't think it matters for your for your your general or your king model. If they're a little bit bigger, then that's absolutely fine for me. And I'm, I will definitely be picking this up. Um, it's a fantastic kit. You actually get a second miniature in the kit. And I'm pretty sure you get to build both. From what I can read here, you build you can build both. It's not a case of build one or the other. So it's a second lord in there as well, not on shield. I imagine um, I will magnetise the main lord as well, so he can be removed from the shield. Um, and then maybe I'll convert this lord here into a thane or something and give him a standard bearer. Who knows? We'll see how he goes. But I love the fact that you get two miniatures there and they are plastic, which is, which is really fantastic. Then we have two more brand new miniatures and these are resin, so Forge World resin and what crackers they are as well. These are really, really brilliant. So we have a new Thane with handgun. Oh, this is miniature, it's just amazing. The face on that is brilliant. Again, these are on the larger size. I don't mind for character models. They definitely have crept up in, in size compared to the old scale. That seems to be the way with these newer miniatures now. And then we have Ungren Iron Fist, so the old character model, the Slayer Lord. And I, again, absolutely stunning miniature. Really, really, really cool. And I think, you know, this is pretty clear. He's going to be at least one of the new profiles in that Arcane Journal. And maybe there'll be a theme list around him. Again, I'll come back to that a little bit later. But I absolutely love all of these new miniatures. So let's have a look at the returning plastics. And a lot of these are available in the Age of Sigmar range at the moment. Now, I do wonder whether they're going to be retired from that Age of Sigmar range as part of the change to Age of Sigmar 4th edition. A lot of these are part of the Cities of Sigmar range. We've obviously had a new Cities of Sigmar book recently. I've not read it, I don't play Age of Sigma at the moment. <laughs> the, uh, the new edition will no doubt tempt me, but I'm very much a square-based fantasy game at heart. So it would have to be pretty amazing to take me away from, from all of this stuff, even if they are getting newer miniatures. But we have miniatures that we recognize, not only from 8th edition, but also from Age of Sigma as well, which includes this Rune Priest, or Rune Lord here, and then this multi sort of purpose kits that came out in 8th edition here is you can build your hammers, you can build the, I always forget the name of these guys with the sort of handheld cannons, I want to say fire drakes but I don't think that's what it is. You can also build iron breakers from them as well. I didn't have these in 8th edition, I had older metal miniatures in my dwarven army which I regret selling but um, they're pretty good, they're nice enough sculpts, some people don't like them as much as the old ones, I think I'm probably in that camp. I won't say that I won't use them until I've maybe tried it or maybe I'll look for some other things. But anyway, they're coming back. They're, they're good kits. They're modern design. And then, of course, you have the miniatures that you get in that starter bundle, which you'll be able to, the starter battalion box, sorry, which you'll also be able to buy as individual boxes as well. So you've got your Thunderers and your Quarrelers and your multi, you build your multi-use Dwarf Warriors, and you can see them built with double-handed weapons there, or hand weapons and shields So I'm pretty sure from memory there were lots of heads with longer beards, so you could build them into long beards as well. And I'm sure there were lots of different crossbows left over. I might be wrong, but then you'll be able to build rages as well. I'm trying to remember that kit and how many bits I had left over in my bits box for years. We have returning Forge World resin kits, or kits now made in Forge World resin. Now, I don't really remember these very well but they are very, very cool. And you get a BSB there. You've got a Lord or a Thane as a command set, and you have a Slayer of Legend. They are nice miniatures if they're reasonably priced. That's definitely something I'd be interested in picking up as, as characters for my armies. So they are pretty cool. We have metal kits as well. So the Anvil of Doom is back in metal. And then we have these, and I don't think I expected these, but maybe I should have based on the releases so far with Tomb Kings and Bretonians, and now with Orcs and Goblins, the return of older metal miniatures from, from 4th edition, 5th edition, 6th edition, units that we didn't really expect to come back, but really, really plugging at those nostalgic heartstrings for people. And these, I believe, are from the Storm of Chaos book and they are very, very cool. And what a, a cool way of bringing in some units that you may have not seen for a while. And again, these aren't in the standard Forces of Fantasy army list, at least 
the Goblin Hewer and the Doom Seekers aren't. So they will hopefully, well, they must be in the Arcane Journal, and again, hopefully points towards the kind of lists we may see in there. Then on made to order, we have these wonderful guys. So Prince Ulther and his Dragon Company. Now I used to own this box set, complete with cardboard box as well. I don't know what happened to the box. I know I sold the miniatures off. I had the full set and lots of extras. And in eighth edition, when I had my all metal dwarf army, which again, I will mention that I rather foolishly sold off. I use these as my iron breakers. Now they are on the small side. Um, you can see them here based on those 25 mils. And if we remember back to the size of those new miniatures, these are going to look very childlike in many ways next to them. But there's nothing you can do about it. These are a made to order. They're there for collectors and people that are interested in being able to get hold of these miniatures again. So I think it's a really, really positive thing. What I find really interesting with these is the rules for these is not going to be included in the Arcane Journal. It's going to be included in the box or on the box. Now, originally with Regiments of Renal, that's the way it was done back in the days of a third edition, I suppose, um, maybe even earlier. But I think it was third edition that this set dated back to. The stats were on the back, the rules on the back, a little bit of lore about them. And they're really, really fun. I really enjoyed the miniatures. Now, it looks like these are coming in two different packs, so a command-based pack and the standard pack. Um, I hope they put the rules out there as a PDF for people who already own these miniatures or want to use them in a different way. If I did use these, I'd probably have them in a future Empire Army, which is something else I'll, I'll want to do. And, and that's one of the ways you can use them, use them as mercenaries. And this seems to me the way that they're kind of bringing that Dogs of War flavor in. Um, and maybe we will see more of these units coming out with that Dogs of War flavor, stats on the box or in the packet, old miniatures brought back. Uh, and then you can field them as dogs of war and maybe in the future they'll release a combined army list for them all which would be a really really fun thing to do a day or so after the adepticon announcement the warhammer the old world facebook page shared a few more images relating to the dwarf mountain holds release we had cannons and organ guns those look like the older plastic miniatures to me we had the flame cannon, which is the metal sculpt. I believe that will still be a metal based on what they've done from other miniatures. It could come out in forge rod resin, I suppose. And then we also have the grudge thrower. And I have an even older one, which I will show you shortly. But uh, again, that's likely to be in metal or resin. And the same with the bolt thrower as well. So these older miniatures coming back, all lovely sculpts. I will definitely be picking up some of these i will need them in my army the only thing i'll probably miss out on will be the grudge trail because i already have one now i have the one remaining miniature from my eighth edition army which is this old metal Goblobber, as it was called at the time, or Grudge Thrower, as it would be now, or Stone Thrower for its more generic term. This is a really, really cool miniature. Now, I painted this miniature quite a few years ago now. My painting has moved on, so I'll definitely be repainting this, and it would need rebasing anyway. And it's going to make its way in a bath of ISO very, very soon when I've got some space in my tub because there's some other little chaps soaking in there at the moment. In this plastic tub here, soaking in a bath of ISO are 16 6th edition plastic dwarf warriors, the predecessors to the ones we've seen in the article, which originally came out in 7th edition. But I have a box of them here sealed as well. Now, these aren't everyone's favourite plastic dwarf sculpt or dwarf sculpt in general. People often prefer the, the older metals for their Dwarf Warriors or prefer the, the later ones. And in many ways, I can understand that these are a little bit clunky and chunky in some ways, but I've always had a bit of a soft spot for them. And when I was able to get a sealed box of them, I couldn't resist it. And these will appear in a painting video soon. And I'm going to leave it sealed until I do open it up for that painting video. But looking forward to getting my teeth stuck into these. So these will be in my army regardless of, of all the new things coming out. So look out for the, the video with these in the future. The current Dwarf Mountain Holds list can be found, of course, in the Forces of Fantasy book that was launched along with the game back in January. So there's no surprise that we'll need miniatures to cover all of the unit entries that are in this book. What I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about and guessing about and wishlisting about is what might be in the Arcane Journal for the Dwarf Mountain Holds. Now, this is obviously not Dwarf Mountain Holds. This is your Tomb Kings and your Bretonian ones, because that's all I have at the moment. 
them. But just by looking at those books already, we start to get a bit of an idea of the kind of things we might find in the Dwarf Imagined Holds, and we can make some educated guesses and some wild swings at guesses for some others. For starters, we know we're going to get some lore and background that expands a bit more than, than what's in the Forces of Fantasy, which is much slimmed down, and that, that kind of takes the place of what you used to find in the, the old army books. But you also get two armies of infamy, which are alternative ways to build armies outside the ground army. And quite often these are themed, maybe fluffy if you want to use that term. They may end up being quite competitive. Who knows? It's very, very early in the day. But it's the themed lists, the armies of infamy. Well, I'm really interested here. First up, I think one of the safest predictions is going to be an army of infamy that's based around slayers. We've had slayer lists before, and one of the brand new miniatures Forge World Resin Umgrim Iron Fist. And what a fantastic miniature it is. We saw a little bit earlier in the video. And feast your eyes again on the attractiveness of this model. Now you can tell I'm a bit excited about this dwarf release, can't you? But I think that that's a pretty good shout that we are going to see a Slayer based list or a Slayer based army. And the last time we saw a Slayer army was during the Storm of Chaos. In 2004, Games Workshop released Storm of Chaos, a supplement for the 6th edition of Warhammer Fantasy. They released a book that went alongside it, a campaign book, very much in the size and style of the army books at the time. And you could play this at home, you could play this in stores and send your results in. And the book was a fantastic resource, gave you a campaign, gave you lots of different ways of playing armies themed to the Storm of Chaos, and I'm not going to go on a massive tangent and talk about the Storm of Chaos now, but they did have a Slayers of Karakadrin army list in there, and that's where we first, I believe first, saw Slay King of Karakadrin, Ungrim Iron Fist. We can see his sixth edition stats for Storm of Chaos there. Now, obviously those stats are likely to change for Warhammer the Old World, but I thought this was pretty cool to have a look at now as a bit of a reference of what we might expect in an arcane journal. There were other special characters as well in the Storm of Chaos. We've got Garagrim Iron Fist there. Now, I don't think we will get two Slayer special characters. I think we'll probably only get two special characters in the Arcane Journal as it is. That seems to be the way for the others, but it is cool to take a look at their Slayer Doomseekers. Now we know these are coming back. We've seen these in the announcement article. Again, these are the sixth edition stats and rules, but they may well give us a good indication of what they might be like in Warhammer the Old World. In many ways, many of the rules and stats haven't changed a great deal at all. So we might not be too far off. They may, they may work in the game here. So if you can get hold of a copy or have a copy or access a copy of Storm of Chaos, probably good to have a little flick through and read the dwarf section. Then we have Malachi McKyson's Goblin Hewer. There was no picture in the launch article, but it was listed, it was mentioned. So this again is coming back. And what a beautiful machine that flings axes. How much fun this will be in games. And I'm very, very excited for this. Now, I imagine this will be another one of the unit profiles in the Arcane Journal. It's pretty straightforward. They've announced the model. They're not on the standard army list, so they've got to be there. This is all pretty low hanging fruit here at the moment, but I'm excited, so I'm going to talk about it anyway. Have a good read through the rules of this. Again, if you can get access, it's all a good fun. And I love the idea of fielding a Slayer army or at least a large Slayer contingent. And for fun, we can look at the Slayer army for this Storm of Chaos in 6th edition as well. So you can see the extra runes, you can see the army special rules as well. You can see the Lords, Heroes, the core units that you can take. So you have Troll Slayers, you've got your Doom Seekers, you've got your Brotherhood of Grimnir, Long Drawn Slayer Pirates, which were a unit from Dogs of War, I believe. Now, how much fun would it be if those come back? And we, we have seen some of these older miniatures. And from the previous editions and previous launches for Warhammer the Old World so far, we have seen later announcements where more and more things are brought along. So when we get the pre-order announcement, I wouldn't be surprised if in that article, suddenly there were extra things and maybe they could be on a made to order as well. Now, how cool would that be if that mold still exists and they found it? I'm pretty sure based on some of the stuff we've seen before, that these could make a return and how cool would that be to have some Slayer Pirates in there? Who knows? Keep your fingers crossed. I hope that happens. 
So where will they go for that second army of infamy? I'm pretty sure the Slayer one is nailed on. It seems pretty obvious. I'll be pretty surprised if they don't do it. We've got a new Ungrim Iron Fist. I think that's the biggest indicator, but with all the other Slayer miniatures that will be returning as well, including the Doom Seekers and the, the Goblin Hewer, these really unusual type of miniatures, it would be bizarre for them not to do that. So for me, that's tick. Second one, difficult. Maybe a Dwarven Hold that doesn't use gunpowder or black powder, traditional, older style Dwarf Warriors. Maybe, could be fun, but that's a list you could just build yourself anyway. I'm not sure how they would buff it. Maybe some special rules that would do it. Maybe Rangers, maybe a Ranger list. I quite like the sound of that. That could be fun. We've seen Bugman teased, old Bugman. So maybe Bugman Rangers will make a return and that could be another theme list. I think that's a pretty strong hope or angle they could go down and I would like that. Another option maybe a little bit more left field but what about airships? So who remembers this page from this beast of an 8th edition hardback rulebook? We have Wrath of Thunder and rules for a dwarf airship. Uh, thunder barges, as are otherwise known, have appeared quite a few times throughout the lore, especially in novels relating to dwarves. A little bit of pivot back to Slayers again with the famous Slayer engineer Malachi McKyson appears in a Gotrick and Felix novel, Flying the Spirit of Grungi, a massive airship. So you've got a bit of a link there between this Slayer army idea, but also some engineers. But let's go back to that 8th edition rulebook and the Wrath of Thunder. Obviously those rules already exist, which is really, really cool and what a fun thing to base it on. Now I'll be honest with you, this will be a massive miniature. That's not something, aside from the Bone Dragon, which was a big plastic launch release, I would be surprised if they brought something like this out. But maybe just using this as a bit of a theme idea and maybe there could be an army list that's based around lots and lots of gyrocopters and gyro bombers, and a really mobile kind of army list, which is something the dwarves really, really suffer from. And in this edition, with artillery not being quite as good, and big ridden flying monsters and dragons and things being at the forefront, the dwarves do suffer a little bit. They don't have anything like that themselves, and their own ability to deal with those things doesn't seem to be as strong as it was in certain editions. So maybe in more of a, a flying mobile kind of list could be interesting and would be really interesting to see as well. So I'm guessing Rangers probably for that second army of infamy, but maybe it could be something engineer based and based around running lots of gyrocopters and gyro bombers, which could be fun as well. If you haven't already checked it out, it's worth going over to Peachy Tips and his new channel. He did a fantastic video on Old World Dwarfs. He talked about his love of dwarves and in many ways it's probably very similar to this video. But he also mentioned a dwarf tank that was in development when he worked in the studio that was never released. Maybe, just maybe, something like that could make its way into an arcane journal if the miniature is something they could actually make. Can you imagine that? And it would fit perfectly in with an engineer style themed list. So maybe it's not just airships, maybe it's engineers in general. Now I'm going to be waiting eagerly for more news on dwarf and mountain holes, but I expect there may well be radio silence on that for a little while now. The Orcs and Goblins were announced on launch day for the whole game itself and obviously they faded into the background as we got our teeth into Bretonians and Tomb Kings and all of those releases. And then when we had the announcement of the pre-order for Orcs and Goblins, we've got all of that news to come out and we've still got to wait for those miniatures to launch. So I expect it to be a little bit quiet in terms of the Dwarven front now. Maybe until we get that pre-order date announced, which, which could well be another two months if the same timeline is. I hope it's not. I hope it's a little bit quicker. I hope it's more like six weeks or so. Keeping my fingers crossed, saving my pennies so I can afford some of it when it comes out. In the meantime, I do have Dwarven related content on the channel planned. I am going to paint and do a tutorial on one of those 6th edition plastic Dwarf Warriors and I will no doubt 
paint that gob lobber after I've stripped it as well and that will be a really really fun thing to explore. I'll also of course be covering other armies for the old world if you are new to the channel and you haven't seen all the stuff I've done already. There's multiple painting tutorials not just for the armies that have been released I was doing them all of last year as well so there are many factions that haven't yet been released that I have done a basic tutorial of, or one or more of the miniatures and I will continue to do that as the time goes depending how it works out and I'd love to hear what you think of the dwarf announcement are you going to be getting involved is it something you want to do are you unhappy about any things they released or do you like to see all the old miniatures coming back what's on your wish list are there any units that you'd like to see return I know I'd really like to see some of the 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 middle hammer era metal miniatures for long beards and hammers and things like that as an alternative to those plastics I'd love to hear even more what you think that armies of infamy will actually be I'll be surprised if there's anyone that doesn't think slayers will be it but you know it could it could well be that I'm wrong there and everyone else on the internet is wrong and he's not them whatsoever but I'd be really really interested in the comments to find out what you think of those come and join the channel's discord and carry the conversation over to there it's a lovely friendly discord so come and have a chat about dwarves or any other Warhammer the Old World Army or any war game really everything is covered on the channel at some point and in the discord any game system is go whether I've covered it on the channel or not so head over there's a link in the show description but anyway thank you very much for watching and if you've enjoyed the video please give us a like it definitely helps the video get seen by others and if you haven't already please consider subscribing to the channel head over to that discord that I mentioned I do have a patron if you'd like to support the channel further so you can always join theirs again there's a link in the description so you can check all the details out for that but thank you very much for watching take care and I'll catch you soon